Alrighty, and welcome back to the Coltsology Podcast. My name is Parker. In today's video, we're getting into what I think is the biggest eye-opening thing as far as what Chris Ballard could be doing, where we could potentially be looking at him as a Colts fan base, as the biggest genius, as maybe, you know, making that franchise shifting move that's ultimately going to save his job and guarantee uh, that he's going to be here for a couple more years to come. Um, as most of you hopefully know, I try to scour around. I try to listen to, you know, both, you know, local Colts content creators, but also pay attention to obviously um, those major uh, brands. And one of the TV shows I love watching is First Things First. Um, and in today's episode, Nick said something that I've been, you know, having in the back of my mind as like, is it a possibility? But the way that I've heard it being spun, it didn't seem like a possibility. So I just kind of threw it out of the back of my brain. But when he said this, I go, what does Ballard do best? do nothing Ballard, backseat Ballard, whatever you want to call him, right? He could do nothing, which is what most people would argue is one of his strengths and actually be good at it, have something good come of it. So um, we'll watch this segment and we'll obviously uh, comment on it as it, as it plays on. Put this tag on him, the second tag, instead of being $55 million, it will be $38 million, See, which is very yeah, doable for them. I So a couple things here. One is... Part of the reason this isn't happen, hasn't happened is because if, if you sign Lamar to an offer sheet and the Ravens are like, all right, we're going to match, you still have to clear out that cap space and the Ravens can wait five days to match. So when you're trying to go get free agents or whatever it is. That's something I didn't know beforehand about this five days to match. Obviously, it makes sense. I believe the same thing happened with DeAndre Ayton. The Suns had so many days to match it. So obviously not shocked, but just something I wasn't considering a, a top of mind. Is it's not seamless. It's not easy. It's not like, okay, we'll clear out the cap space if Lamar, if we end up getting him. You have to clear out cap space for a player you might not end up getting. The other reason I think it's taken. Uh, again, I would argue when it comes to moving space for a player that you might not even get in Lamar, I still argue that those are pieces we need to move on from at some point or another in Ryan Kelly, Mo Ali Cox, et cetera. Um, Kenny Moore, like those are guys. If I mean honestly, they'd have to get, we'd have to move on from him anyway to make enough rooms for Lamar. But at the same time, I would argue all of those guys. Most of us have a consensus as like, hey, they're they're not going to be a part of this this next generation team, right? Taking some time, and I am not as certain as you are. It's going to end back with the Ravens, is because there might be a team that wants him that just doesn't want this year's draft pick to be included. Because if you wait until after the draft, right. then it's the next two draft picks, which mm. would be the next two drafts. Yeah. So there's one team in particular, Brew, and that's the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts, whose owner talked about wanting the Bryce Young, who wanted... Also told us two Super Bowls in this decade. You know, wanted a quarterback in this draft. Well, what happened on Friday? Yeah. The Panthers jumped up to one. So it looks like... Gave up the barn, the neighbor's barn, the neighbor's barn's cousin's barn. They gave up everybody's barn, and they threw DJ Moore in it for fun. Stroud's going one, Bryce Young's going two, and the Colts are going to be sitting there at four. Now, maybe they love Levis or Richardson, or maybe they wait till the draft, draft their guy with <clears throat> non-quarterback. What if they can finesse that? Uh, what if they can do the old fake out with the Cardinals and give them that Kenny Moore and third round pick and get to three mm -hmm. and then the sign the Lamar player. to a huge deal I also think Detroit could sneaky be in play what I don't think is that Lamar is signing a tag anytime before September if he does so Lamar is not signing anything until September unless obviously it's on his term so the Colts could go into this draft at number four Theoretically, get that defensive guy, whether that's potentially Will Anderson Jr., Jalen Carter, one of these top-notch cornerbacks coming out, um, and really put a really put a uh, a screwdriver into you know some of these teams' problems as far as you know they probably didn't have a, a nut or a bolt to to think that the Colts would be going that route. Maybe some of them are uh, no Ballard well enough that they would think that. Um, but I think this take right here by Nick Wright is something that, that, that definitely should be in play if you're, if you're Chris Ballard. Um, you could sit here and do what you do best, which is wait, let the time tick, let, the, let the, the chips fall where they may. And, you know, I think most people would argue unless some team just comes out and wows Lamar with a fully five-year guaranteed deal, um, 
I agree with Nick. I don't think he's signing it with the Ravens until he absolutely has to, which is in September, to, again, keep the pressure on them. They're the ones who ultimately don't want to pay him. And I think every day that they don't pay Lamar, it's another day Lamar is reminded that the Ravens don't believe in me and they don't want to pay me, right? If you're Chris Ballard, you can do what you do best, which is scout guys and draft and, you know, smoke screens, hide behind all the smoke screens and flashbangs possible. And potentially, you know, let's say you, you get real sneaky and you're good at, you know, sweet talking or whatever it is and you can convince the the cardinals you definitely want one of these quarterbacks and um you're willing to move up you psych them out at number three and i think most people would argue when you're just looking at a prospect in this year's nfl draft will anderson jr is by far that best prospect prospect when you look at the colts salary caps salary cap situation wouldn't it make a lot more sense if again they wouldn't be able to re-sign yannick they could, uh, you know, Chris Ballard could be like, oh, the money just didn't make sense with Yannick. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it work. X, Y, Z, A, B, C, right? We don't bring back Yannick. We say, hey, we're just waiting a little bit longer on a pass rusher to see, you know, again, what Ballard does best, nothing, sitting back and waiting. Again, potentially psych out the Cardinals here maybe sometime this week, get that trade up to number three. You don't have to bring back a guy like Yannick. Set yourself up even more to potentially be able to give Lamar that cap flexibility as far as pay, potentially set up the contract where again if you're looking at some of these moves these ravens are making i think they're going to try to go in a different direction i'm hoping they i think they're hoping one team takes that plunge and makes it work for them the colts could even potentially let's say after they draft that number four they get that cornerback or whatever or in a cornerback defensive end and, and will anderson jr again you have that pos position solidified we talk about on this channel outside of quarterback number two is what who's going to rush the quarterback who's that edge rusher pass rusher one right if you could potentially get that solidified for the next how many years in Will Anderson Jr., right? And then use that leverage and X, Y, Z to go to the Ravens and say, hey, now we're willing to do that deal and give you the next few first picks. Why? Because we believe with Lamar Jackson, this new edge rusher we have, and, you know, again, this is Ballard betting on himself, betting on the team he's already put, you know, around. Granted, he's probably, you know, having those second guesses about X, Y, Z contract over the past year or two, which we've seen again with Ryan Kelly, Mo Ali Cox, Kenny Moore, you know, people, him basically saying, hey, punt, punt. And now eventually it's coming time where he's got to make a real decision. I would argue if you're Chris Ballard, um, do you see yourself keeping your job and not being a playoff team? No. So if you're willing to say after the draft to give Lamar that contract, you're willing to say, OK, unfortunately, I'm going to give up my first round pick potentially for the next two years. Maybe you can negotiate with the Ravens and get like a first and a third. Right. But then you're saying, OK, now I'm picking what, 18 back. If I'm making the playoffs, right, and I'm losing one, hopefully if worse comes to worse, two. But again, you do that deal we talked about on the, the TikTok video from Fantasy Football AZ. You give Lamar that five-year deal, first three years of it fully guaranteed. Hey, first three years, we're, the, we're in the Lamar. The last two, you know, that's where our wiggle room is. That's where our out is potentially, right? But you say, Lamar, the next three years you play, that whatever money it is, a hair or two above Kyler Murray, you're here. You're an Indianapolis Colt. You're wearing the blue and the white, okay? Indianapolis, we're, you're moving in, okay? You thought you thought what we did with the Mayflower was dirty. What we're about to do with Lamar is going to be even dirtier, okay? I think Nick Wright, you know, he's and he's not a Colts apologist. If you watch him at all, um, he's, he was very out, very hard on Jeff Saturday. He was probably one of the harder people in the media on Jeff Saturday and the Indianapolis Colts. But the fact that he's throwing that out there as a possibility... Something, again, to keep in mind. If you're Ballard, what does he do best? Holding back, doing nothing. He could potentially let even guys like Yannick go if he's considering a strategy like this. I thought it was super interesting. I thought I had to get this video out here today. Again, as free agency unfolds, something to consider as we move forward. As always, thank you.